These B-roll sequences were all shot with the B-Script 1.7X Tele on the 14 Pro Max, and it works great. Remember, most lenses don't work very well since the 13 Pro and its larger sensor. They all have some or a lot of edge softness, fringing, ghosting, and or chromatic aberration. This is one of the only tellies that I know of that is specifically designed for the later, larger sensor iPhones. The other one I've used that is from B-Script is their 1.33X Anamorphic, the Mark II. And I shot my short film pre-owned with it, and it works well too. Now let's get the nerdy stuff out of the way. Using the Cinema P3 app, shooting 4K ProRes LT. This is the standard lens with the 1.7x tele on it. I think you can immediately see that there is nothing wrong with this image. This is sharp. The color rendition looks good. No vignetting. Pretty impressive. Now I'm going to push in on the 2x tele, so the 48mm with the 1.7x tele. Now pushing in here, you do get a little bit, I mean just a very tiny bit of edge softness. Center looks great, and actually the edges look good, it's just the very corners are just subtly, subtly soft. And just for reference and to use as a baseline, here it is with no lens attached, so just the iPhone 24mm built in. And as you would expect, this is of course very sharp edge to edge, and looks good. And that of course includes pushing in. And this actually looks very similar to using the lens. And to show that, here's a comparison. Again, the colors look great, there's no vignetting, and it looks very sharp. And when you jump into the two times 48 millimeter, same story, although you do see just the very, very minute softness around the edges. And I wouldn't even almost call it softness, it may be more just a very subtle aberration or ghosting, very subtle. You would really never notice this unless you're pixel peeping. So that's pretty cool and all, and it looks really good, but the Moment lenses and some of the other brands do okay on the main wide. Not perfect by any stretch. These are better, but they do work, sort of. But now none of them work on the 3X Tele really at all. Most are unusable. So what about the B-Script? So to use the 3X Tele, I had to back the camera up about three feet. Otherwise it's the same setup as earlier. So this is with no lens, this is a baseline, the 77 millimeter, and this of course looks tack sharp. A nice looking image. Now we'll put the lens on though and check it out. Now I didn't know what to expect here because every other tele lens I've used on the newer phone since the 13 Pro has looked bad. But lo and behold, this looks great. As a matter of fact, I'm not seeing anything wrong with this image at all. And even comparing it side by side with just the iPhone lens, they look identical. You just get a longer lens look. This is the only tele lens I've used so far that allows you to do this. So all the horse shots I did at the beginning of this video were all shot with the 3X tele on the iPhone and the 1.7X tele from B-Script. The kitchen shots I used the standard wide with the 1.7X tele. Now let's look at some more samples, including a comparison to just using the built-in lenses. This is the standard iPhone lens with the B-Script Tele, and notice the nice shallow depth of field. Same shot, now pushed in on the 48 millimeter. Now the iPhone lens only, it's obviously a wider shot, but you still have shallow depth of field. The larger sensor on the later generation phones, the 13 and 14, really does make a difference. Now we'll compare them. The 1.7X is on the left, built-in lens on the right, they both look pretty good, but of course you are getting more shallow depth of field using the B-Script telephoto. Now here are some shots using the 3X, the 77 millimeter, in combination with the 1.7X tele. So again, it's almost a six times telephoto look. And just as a reminder, again, I have not been able to get a telephoto to work properly on the iPhone telephoto. So this is new and this is really cool. I think this is especially good for people shooting documentary or sports or news. That's one big drawback to using a phone is we've never really had a long telephoto. 
So build quality is quite good as you would expect. This is a beast cage and this is the lens on here. And this is a free well filter I was using. This is what I used to shoot the horse footage. The cap comes off and reveals the filter. This is a 77 millimeter filter. And I have a step up ring on there. But the lens itself is very well built. And I would actually call it somewhat heavy, especially for a smartphone lens. Now that's a good thing when you're using a setup like this. You can't really use this lens on lighter setups like smartphone gimbals, etc. Of course, you can't really use this cage either. And you have to have a cage like this or the Beast Grip Pro or a similar cage that has a 37 millimeter mount. And that's the key. Again, this is a robust lens. And one thing they changed on this particular model, which is interesting, is they now have a 62 millimeter filter thread. The previous versions had a 58 millimeter. So that is a little bit different. I guess just because the glass is so much bigger, I'm not sure. But again, this is a very robust lens. Build quality is excellent. And so this should last a long time, or at least until they change the sensor size of the iPhone again. So overall, I have to say I'm super impressed with this lens. There's really nothing not to like. The ability to use it on both the wide and the tele are huge. And then especially if you have the 14 Pro, then you get the 1X and 2X within the same main wide camera, and then the option for the 3X on the actual telephoto. And they all work very well. To me, it just really makes your phone more of a versatile filmmaking tool. Now you can have a super wide shot, a medium, a telephoto, and then even a long range telephoto. So if you're interested in this lens, there is a link in the description. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.